Keep washing the tractor. I want it clean, Gianna. Hi, and welcome to Hoosier Helpers. Today is part three of the Wintertime Blues Project. In the last one, I gave you a little sneak peek of adding ballast weight, uh, putting wheel spacers on, and it's all so that I could do this. Here are six shims for the pressure relief valve. And if you go online, you can find the parts. I didn't know which one I'd need. I didn't know if I'd want to use two of one and none of the other. So what I did is I ordered two of each. The reason I ordered two of each, they were 32 cents each. I like Roman's Outdoor Power and Equipment as a dealer. They're out of Independence, Kansas. They charged me 32 cents each. Grand total of $2.19 for six shims. And then the freight charge to get it out of Independence, Kansas to Germantown Hills, I told them just throw it in an envelope and mail it, 54 cents. So grand total of under three bucks and I'll have the, the pressure uh, increase. In addition, I built this here a while back. I've got another video, here's a link. This is just a, a 3000 PSI pressure gauge with a quick coupler that'll go on my loader. I'll leave uh, item descriptions in the, the details here in case you wanna build up your own. I know there's kits out there, you can buy it, it's convenient comes with the shims, comes with the pressure gauge, and it's like 50 bucks or something like that. I know for a fact, I don't have $20 in this, and I've got three bucks in the shims. So for less than $30, you can build up your own kit and save yourself 20 bucks. Look at below in the description for the details on how to build this and these. Let's get started. Oh, one, I just want to make a final note. Everybody, I'm wearing a Kubota hat. Normally I wear a Caterpillar hat, but I was out at a cat dealer in Indianapolis a couple weeks ago and um, they sell Kubota tractors there. So I'm like, hey, can I buy a hat? And they were generous enough to give me a hat. So thank you, McAllister Machinery out of Indianapolis, Indiana. I appreciate uh, the hat. And uh, so the first thing that we wanna do is do a uh, hydraulic pressure baseline for it. So we're sitting in the garage, it's about 60 degrees in here. I've got the heater running, so it's been relatively warm this whole time over the last three days. So the tractor's good and at least decently warm. Just gonna go ahead and start it. And we're gonna snap on this pressure gauge. So it hit 1750 when I had it wrapped up pretty good there. 1500 or maybe 1550 at an idle. Um, when I checked it last time, I think that's pretty on par with where it was at. So now we're gonna go ahead and get started with disassembling the, um, the hydraulic relief valve. First, I wanna make sure all hydraulic pressure is relieved before we open the system up. Want to get a rag and wipe off any areas around that because we will lose a little oil there. Not much, but some. Definitely don't want to contaminate the hydraulic system by opening something up and having it dirty. So what I'm using is tooling. Got a socket, seven eighths, a wobble socket, a six inch extension, all in half inch. I'm going to do a close up here of which one is the actual hydraulic relief valve. So you have two uh, hexed head items here. The upper one that's circled here, I believe this is some sort of priority valve. I'd have to look at a hydraulic schematic to know for sure. But that lower one is your pressure relief valve. So you'll want to remove this lower one here, and uh, inside there is where the spring and the shims will go. Interestingly, I've got some oxidation here. 
that is behind the o-ring so um, I guess that might be normal then you have a small spring here and behind the spring is where you should have shims if you're gonna have shims so I just check <clears throat> check to see how many shims that I had before I actually don't have any shims so um, it might have been good at the factory when they build it or within spec over time they do lose some of that uh, the tension in the spring so you can have a pressure decrease over time this tractor is over 10 years old now so you know just through all the years it might have slowly got its uh, tension wore down a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and put probably the middle shim in see what that does on the pressure gauge and then we can go add more or take away from there so as far as the shims go the point two shim is a 313513760 and then the point four shim is a 313513750 and then the point one shim is the 313513770 so i'm going to go with the point two shim or I'm actually going to go with the point four and just see how it goes. So that is a three one three five one thirty seven nine fifty for a part number. So I dropped the the shim down into the bottom of the the deal here. I'm putting the spring back in, and then I'm going to assemble it this way. Back into the tractor. Okay, we're nice and tight. Let's go back over and check that pressure gauge. Go at an idle. We've increased it to 1800 PSI. In 1950, um, 1950 it uh, wrapped up. So that's where I want to stay at for right now. Um, you know, we started at 1750, we upped at 200 PSI. That's not a bad increase. And that was the 0.4 shim. So if we wanted to go a little more, I might put a 0.1 shim on it as well. And, um, that might get us up to that 2000 PSI, but I think 1950, we'll see how it digs, how it lifts, how it performs operationally. And if it's acceptable, great. If not, I can always put another little shim. I'll keep them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this episode of Hoosier Helpers. Stay tuned next time where I'm gonna take some disc weights that I had bought. And so I'm gonna make, make an a counterweight. I've got about 200 pounds of weight that I'll be using. It'll be a lot more convenient than hanging the tiller off the back that sticks so much further out. With the tires loaded now, with that counterweight, it should be acceptable for what I need to do. Also, when I'm in tight corners, there's a lot of times I can't have that tiller on the back end. So anyway, hope you enjoyed. Remember, hit the like button if you enjoyed the episode. And please consider subscribing if you're not subscribed already. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.